the OnePlus 5. Did you get it out of your system? Let's take a step back. The OnePlus 5 was the most hyped phone of Q2 2017, but after it launched, that hype instantly turned to gripe and OnePlus quickly became a mobile mockery as many found something to complain about. But in my opinion, the biggest contributor of the OnePlus fuss was the massive expectations buildup that no company was going to live up to. What's up everybody, my name is Kerry Bauman and today I'm pretty much doing some damage control on the OnePlus 5. OnePlus announced this phone back in June and whether it be the price or the camera or the lack of waterproofing or design, pretty much everybody had something to complain about. So I hopped on the OnePlus website, chose the budget option and two weeks after landing on my doorstep, here are my thoughts. So for either $479 or $539, on the inside, the specs on this thing are second to none. A Snapdragon 835 chip is the best on the market right now. An octa-core processor paired with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, 64 or 128 gigs of super fast UFS 2.1 storage, Bluetooth 5, aluminum body, headphone jack, and the latest version of Android. What's to complain about, right? Well, let's start with the design. It looks a bit familiar. I agree, from the back, it's a spitting image of the iPhone 7 Plus as well as about seven other Chinese counterparts. It doesn't change the fact that it's still a good-looking phone. So you're telling me if Gal Gadot had a sister that looked just like her, you ain't hitting that? It may be a big deal, but is it that big of a deal? The display up front is a 5.5-inch AMOLED with only 1080p resolution. I say only because of the top five flagship phones to make an appearance in 2017. This is the only one that comes with less than a 1440p resolution. Some people will say this is a big deal, but honestly, unless you have two devices side by side, I'd challenge you to spot the differences of one versus the other. My bigger complaint would be the lack of brightness. In direct sunlight, the brightness isn't all there, but in everyday use, it performs just fine. Also up front, you have a 16 megapixel camera and possibly the fastest fingerprint sensor on the market and programmable capacitive buttons. While I'm not the biggest fan of capacitive buttons, the additional functionality of these is hard to ignore. You can swap the back and recents button if you choose, and all three buttons have two additional shortcuts you can add via long press or a double tap. The anodized aluminum back is pretty slick in the hand, so unless you're super careful with the phone or suffer from some sort of sweaty hand syndrome, I'd recommend a case, or possibly a skin, for some extra grip. The speaker on the bottom is nothing to write home about, but I think it's better than people give it credit for. It's on par with the G6s and the S8s, if not better. And lastly, the alert slider is a nice bit of added functionality, allowing you to set three different sound profiles and easily switch back and forth between them. This kind of customization is everywhere in the software of the phone as well. Oxygen OS gives a very stock Android look and feel with a few added features here and there. Whether it's choosing which icons are allowed to show up in the notification bar, customizing your own lock screen shortcuts for music control or opening certain apps, toggling reading mode, which adjusts the screen for an easier reading experience, swiping up from anywhere on the home screen to open the app drawer, or swiping down to pull the notification shade, or even selecting your preferred vibration pattern for incoming calls, OnePlus is definitely showing they're still thinking about the little things. Though it's not perfect. The stock messaging app, while visually appealing, doesn't support group messages, and if multiple pictures show up at once, they show up as a slideshow rather than viewing them individually. The auto-rotate feature seems to be a bit too sensitive, and the jelly scrolling effect, which supposedly affects every OnePlus 5 produced, I don't really notice it. The software experience has been the best of any phone I've used so far. Pair the Snapdragon 835 with 6 to 8 gigs of RAM, a very lightweight OS, and only a 1080p display, this phone is smooth as hell and faster than Carl Pei running from questions about OnePlus benchmarks. It crushes the Galaxy S8 and every real-world speed test, and something I haven't heard anyone comment about is how cool the phone stays, even under heavy use. This combination of great speed and lightweight also leads to great battery life. The 3300mAh battery is pretty middle-of-the-road size-wise, but you can really crank some usage out of it. And like every phone, each night we would keep track of the screen on time and percent battery life remaining, and then average it at the end of the week. And when it was all said and done, this thing got a very impressive 
5 hours and 48 minutes of screen on time. Just barely taken over that two hole. Continuing the battery specs, OnePlus is known for their dash charging, promising a day's power and a half an hour. And over a half hour charge, you could typically get about 55% battery life, good for about three hours and 10 minutes of screen on time, which for an average user is about a day's power. And moving on to the camera, rather cameras. OnePlus really hyped the camera on this phone. Whether it be with the first tagline on their website, or not one, but two mentions of it on the box, or even having model Emily Rada Jkowski promote it. But it was quick to receive scrutiny for not blowing everyone away. In reality, it's not the best camera on the market, but it's a step up from the 3T, and OnePlus continues to trend positively in camera quality. And even though it's not the best camera you can buy, the quality is still impressive. With good lighting, the 16 megapixel camera isn't going to disappoint. Pair it with the 20 megapixel telephoto lens, you get two times optical zoom that's really more like 1.33 times. And an interesting portrait effect that likely I won't use very much. Unless you're a photo buff, you're going to have a hard time picking out the differences of this and something more premium. It is a bit annoying having to switch back between photo and video mode. We've all made that mistake before. But the quick shortcut from the home screen allows you to do it seamlessly. Double tapping the power button will launch the camera, or instantly take a picture if you desire. And the watermark, it's optional, I turned it on to see what it was like. It does record video in 4K at 30 frames per second, or 1080p at 60, but the lack of optical image stabilization is kind of a bummer, especially when they're trying to stand out from the competition, but all in all, I'll give the camera a thumbs mostly up. All in all, my experience with the OnePlus 5 has been pretty much all sunshine and rainbows. With the amount of hate this thing is getting, you'd think it was setting people's crotches on fire. So let me know what you guys think. Are you still on the OnePlus hate train, or are you guys starting to come around? So that's all I've got for this one. Thank you guys so much for stopping by, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go. And uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in another one. Cheers. Hey, uh, I'm recording right now. Let me give you a call back in like 20 minutes. Yeah, sure. You'll be on the next one. So that's all I've got for this one. Thank you for watching. Uh, fuck. Cheers.